everybody, Dan back here with you. Thanks for tuning in to hang out with me for a little bit today. So I'm out in the back here plugging away at these floors on this delivery. Um, we'll get, we're getting there, it's getting closer. So kind of show you what I've been up to lately. So finally uh, I fixed, I uh, put this end of that brace on this weekend. I still gotta grind a little bit of the welds down, make it look a little bit better. So I think what we're gonna work on today, we're gonna work on changing this brace. So it's a little roasted down at the bottom there and i got to work on changing this part of the inner rocker but we're getting there plugging away so i always said i like solid cars which everybody likes solid cars but i'm almost glad this convertible behind me has a completely shot floor because if i had put a full floor in this car i'd have been done a month ago this is probably a weekend job so Sometimes it's a blessing in disguise because I'm going to slice that thing out around the uh, spot welds and stick the new one up in there and weld it in. <laughs> but anyway, we're getting there. So pretty much all I have left for the floors then is, you know, like I said, we're going to get this done, that done. I got to finish welding that in and fix a little bit of the inner rockers on this in that section there. And then I think we're going to touch up some uh, spots with the sandblaster. We're going to seal it up. And we're going to paint it. And we're going to put the car back in the frame. So at least that's the plan. Hopefully it doesn't take too long. So let's get to work here so we can get it done. Oh, by the way, um, subscription update. I think we are up to 692, so we're creeping up there. Like I told you guys or been telling you guys, when we get to 1,000, I'm going to give away that $100 gift card. So... We're getting there, plugging along. So let's get to work. So we got this brace off. So that's what it looks like after it's gone. Now a lot of times when these braces rot out, this is what you're going to have waiting for you underneath. And that's why they rot out, because they, they get so plugged up with dirt and road grime and rocks and mouse nests and anything you could think of that packs in there. I pounded on this thing for I don't know how long, and I mean, when I do it, stuff's still coming out of it. So... What we're going to do is we're just going to replace this section of rocker, which we re planned on doing anyways. Now here's another kind of a neat little fun fact here. So this is your this is your floor brace or your uh, your seat brace where your seat actually bolts into. Now, for those of you that don't know, these window deliveries these are the only tri fives that ever came with factory bucket seats, and what these have 
is there's a couple of little uh, stands that are welded to the floor with a pivot for the seat to bolt to because it, it folds forward so you can get behind it. Well, anyways, so these nuts here are where if you had a bench seat, you got that little loop that goes over the front little fork things on your uh, seat mount track or your seat track. Um, those were never even drilled out. So you can see in there, the nuts are there, but the holes aren't opened up. But at some point, what somebody did is they just knocked a couple of holes through it and ran some lag bolts down through it. In fact, there was an old, I think it was an old Buick bench seat or something in this when I got it. And I have the bucket seats to go back in it. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to weld those, tap those little holes back down, weld them up. And I might even drill out the holes just so they're there for the, uh, uh, if I ever wanted to, anybody ever want to put a bench seat in it. Now, these only came standard with one seat on the driver's side. So that's why those are welded on the floor. But an option on sedan deliveries was a passenger seat. So what they did on those is they have the brackets, but they actually bolted to the floor. And you can see that actually looks like a trunk washer that somebody at the plant probably used when they bolted them in. So those actually unbolt here. I'll go around the other side so you can kind of see what I'm talking about here. All right, so there are your little pivot pieces that weld right to the floor. And there are the holes that somebody evidently drilled. And see, those ones actually bolt in. So, yep, when this was new, and those are the other things they have. So there's little, like, uh, reinforcement plates for the back of the seat to sit on so it doesn't dent up the floor. So I think I'll fix those up. And here's our new brace we're gonna clean up and put on. Looks like I say, first I have to fix this portion of the rocker. And there's a little bit of the floor I'm gonna have to replace. We'll just uh, cut a little piece of sheet metal and fit that in there. All right, so I cut that rocker open. Now, if you ever wonder what rots out rocker panels, that is years and years. Look at that, just packed in there. So now you picture that gets wet. Look, that's like a, a vine of some type that actually grew inside the car. So that is what we're gonna get out of there. All right, so we gotta fill that little hole in there. So I just got a flat piece of metal. We're just gonna make a nice little filler patch for that right there. See what we can do. Okay guys, so I thought I was recording. Apparently I wasn't. <laughs> so here's what I did. So I did get this piece welded in. You say, what I've been doing on this car is instead of taking that whole inner rocker out, I just been replacing what needed to be replaced. You can see where I filled that in. Now we're just getting ready to weld that brace on. Now, one thing I want you guys to keep in mind is I am 100% not a professional body guy. So I just do this for fun. I'm a dumb parts guy. So uh, if I do things the wrong way, which I'm sure I do, um, I'm just doing the best I can here. Because to me, I just like getting these things going down the road. I like working on them. And... None of my cars, they'll probably never be, you know, award-winning show cars, but they get looks and waves and honks and smiles going down the road, so that's really all that matters to me. So, I guess I'd, you'd call me a shade tree mechanic, so. This is what we're doing. So, as soon as I get all this welded in, I'm going to go back and I'm going to sandblast all this, and we're going to put everything in epoxy primer. So, let's go ahead and finish getting this thing welded up.
All right, guys, there you have it. So it is nice and solid now. I do have to fill in a little piece here. I cut it a little bit too short, but that won't be any, that won't take any time at all. But for now, I mean, it's solid. So that's, that's all, that's all I wanted. Really. Let's see, you don't really see the underside anyhow when you're uh, driving it. So it's gonna be solid, primered and painted, and we're gonna call it good. All right, guys, so I'm up in the top garage. Thought I'd show you something kind of different today. So I know I've told you guys in the past that uh, I tend to buy out a, guy, a lot of guys, like uh, parts lots, I guess you'd say, you know, whether they're getting out of the hobby or if they finished a project and they have a bunch of leftover stuff. That's how I've gotten a lot of this stuff. So, you know, if somebody's got, you know, stuff listed on Craigslist or something individually, I'll message them and ask them what they want for the whole works. So... My neighbor behind me, um, he's actually got a 55 uh, 210 four-door wagon that he inherited from a friend of his. Um, and I've kind of been helping out on it a little bit. And uh, the guy he inherited it from is a gentleman, and his, he's in his mid-90s, so he just can't do it anymore. And he has a whole horde of Tri-5 parts. He lives down in Louisiana. So the other day, my buddy asked me, hey, do you need anything? I said, well, anything, you know. So... Uh, I'll have to show you what he brought me back. I couldn't believe this. You know, I thought he'd bring me a couple of pieces or whatnot, but he pretty much filled up his car. Um, yeah, so some wind lace, you know, jute under underlayment for uh, carpets. Let's see what we got in here. So this looks like a bunch of whole bunch of uh, 57 hood bullets and rubber bumper delete pieces. Pretty much all that's in here. Wow, there's a lot of this stuff in here. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much all. All 57 uh, hood, hood bullets, hood rockets. So here, it's just kind of a cool piece. I did open this. Brand new in the box. So brand new in the box. 57 license plate light. Set that to the side there. What we got in here. So that's a brand new aftermarket uh, rear view mirror stem for a convertible. What else we got here? Some miscellaneous weather strips. Seal. Uh, it's a Nomad lower gate strip. Weather well, strips for a hardtop convertible. You can use those. A whole bunch of, it's like 57 armrests. And there's a pair. So these. 57 sedan now believe it or not sedan and hardtop or I should, I should say Bel Air and 210 sedans actually had different armrests and different ashtrays uh, it doesn't look right so what that looks like those actually look like I believe those are Bel Airs I'm a little rusty on Bel Air and 210 but I know there is a difference See, going through this stuff to me is like Christmas. <laughs> so a couple of original Bel Air crests, and it looks like a couple of brand new Dan Trek reproductions. What else we got here? Brand new in the box. Oh, I know what this is. This is a brand new GM 
e-brake handle. Now, when new, five, six, seven tri fives, these are black bakelite plastic, and they break. Well, then, sometime after the fact, GM actually replaced a replacement chrome one that's heavy pot metal, so it uh, they wouldn't break. So technically, this isn't correct for a tri five, but then again, it is. See what else we got here. All right, so looks like that's a 57 windshield washer jar, an original. This is a brand new Trico windshield washer jar, no lid, but I don't think it's ever been used before. There's the paper for it right there. Look, we got a pair of what, probably Foxcraft 57 fender skirts. Let's see. 57 dash bezels. A couple of Dan Chuck turquoise seat belts. Now, these are pretty cool. I, I was pretty surprised to see these. So, what these are, now there's five of them here. Brand new in the box, GM NOS hood bullets. Or rockets, I guess you'd say. So, you know, the reproductions are probably nicer than these because these were just, you know, standard replacement parts from General Motors. But still, it's kind of neat to see brand new ones in the box. And I know I, a lot of this stuff GM actually made quite a while. Like I say, I, I'm a parts manager for a GM parts department. And I mean, it was even a handful of years ago, you could still buy uh, things like, uh, you could actually get the Nomad tailgate bars. Um, you could get the Bell Air Crest that I just showed you. Um, 57 fuel injection cross flags and scripts were available for a while. Um, there's a whole bunch of just small trinkety stuff that now is all long gone, but I've worked there for 25 years and I mean, like I say, within probably the last 10 years, a lot of that stuff you could still get. So this probably isn't all that old, but it's still pretty cool. Um, so this, I could not figure out what this was. It's a part from Cars Incorporated. And I kind I think I finally figured out what this is. This, I think, is the well liner for a convertible, which works out pretty well because I got that 57 convertible all back. Uh, what else we get? Brand new pack of windshield wiper cranks. Or uh, not windshield wiper. Window cranks, door handles, bent window cranks, and the plastic washers. And then uh, a brand new set of the linoleum and brown for a wagon or nomad. So, so I asked him, I said, hey, well, so what do you got to have for this stuff? And he tells me, you know what? You're helping me work on my car. I got it given to me, so I'm giving to you. That's it. So I got some pretty nice friends out there. So, like I say, if you guys ever need anything, whew, I mean, I could. I got shelves and shelves of parts, and this is just the top garage. So one of these days, I really need to organize it because I do things like put things away and I can't find them. <laughs> so, other than that, I'm going to show you one last thing, and then we're going to get out of here for the night. Okay, so I want to show you guys one last thing. So, since we were on the topic of e-brake handles, and I was just showing you that uh, replacement one that I got uh, on this stuff, uh, I don't know how many of you know, but there is a difference between 55 and 56 and a 57. So if you're at a swap meet or something, you see, you know, e-brake handles, you know, first glance, they look pretty well identical, okay? But there is a big difference. Well, not a big difference, but there's a difference. So if you get the wrong one, you go to put it in your car, you're going to be mad. All right, so if you look at these, let me see how I can orient these here. So if you can see that, you can see how this is a 55 and a 56 one. If you see this bracket here, right here, See how it's pretty much a 90 degree, your dash should be right here. 
there's like a 90 degree angle to the handle. Now on a 57, you can see that's actually kicked backwards because on a 57, the dash is sloped slightly upwards. So if you can see this, let's see how's the easy way to do this. You can see how that one is swept, this one is swept back more than this. So 55 and 56, 57. No, no real easy way to t do that, but if we do that, you can kind of tell the difference. So, all right, guys, that's my uh, tutorial for tonight, I guess. So, as always, thanks for watching. We're getting there on the subscribers. I think we'll be a thousand, hopefully, sometime this summer. Um, I really appreciate them. I'm kind of shocked by your guys' response to my videos. You know, when I first started doing this. I just kind of, you know, thought it'd be kind of fun. I was posting a lot of videos, family stuff, and I got the idea that, hey, I should put some of my car stuff up because everybody had always told me that, uh, you know, people might like seeing that. And really, I'm kind of overwhelmed with all the response you guys have been giving me. So, appreciate. I really do appreciate it. I just want to tell you guys that thanks a lot. So, as always, hope you guys have a good night. Um, like and subscribe. Hundred dollars up for grabs. I know it ain't much, but it's something just fun to do. So, all right, guys, have a good night. And we'll see you next time.